the loudness trick, how to use Isotope RX phase correction to gain some headroom. Okay, so let me show you something about this. We are inside Isotope RX. I call in the waveform statistics that is showing you actually for the whole audio file where the peaks are. I looped a little part of a kick drum and I'm gonna just play it for a second. That's the sound of the kick drum. We see there are peaks at plus 0.02, true peak. If I use the phase correction tool, I can have a suggestion when it's learning something. It says that there is a rotation of 26 degrees to be applied to the signal, and I can render this. When I render this, the true peak level dropped down at minus 0.88, one decibel of, of gain, right? But at what cost? Let's have a look at this. So before initial state, And I'm going to flip now with the phase. Before. After. Let's zoom a bit more in the waveform to see what's happening here. Before, we see that we have those clips here. After, they are down, but we see that the peaks have dropped. We measure them, we see them. What if I change the view? and dial in some spectral view. This is before, this is after. You see everything here in the low end that happened? Let's zoom in. Before, there's not much energy here. The transient is starting and we see the low end coming just afterwards. After, this whole part here has shifted. Let me highlight this for you. This here. Before, after, before, after. That's one part of the problem that's happening with the phase shift is we are creating some kind of pre-ringing. It's not really pre-ringing, but you see the low end is appearing before the initial transient, hence smearing the sound. And so this is changing the impact of the perception of the sound. There is an impact on the transients, there is a smearing effect happening, so we gain some loudness, but at what cost? And I'm doing this just on a single kick drum. As I said, sometimes it's not an issue. Usually, for example, if you are processing a vocal, if you want really, really like super controlled vocal, vocals tend to have a lot of asymmetry and there is not so much transitory information. You have yeah, the dental sounds, the T's, the D's that have some of, of, of a little bit of transients, but they are not as snappy, not as hard than on kick drum than on percussive elements. I'm not saying you can't use that phase correction tool, but I'm saying if you want to use it, use it wisely. Pay attention to why you're using it for and at what cost. Let's take another example of a track I have here. Initial state, I did uh, metering, I'm at minus 1.09 and it sounds like this. Then I get phase action from isotope RX and the peaks go at minus 1.03. So actually, instead of gaining headroom, I'm losing headroom. And then I tried the adaptative phase, which is messing up even more the signal. And so we'll play the three ones in, uh, in sequence. So first one original. Phase. Adaptative phase. And what you hear is actually that between the two first one, we lose a little bit of the low end. It's been, uh, becoming a little bit more boxy, but not that much. But with the last one, actually, the boxiness increases and the, the, the transient definition also reduced. Well, in terms of loudness, we are the same loudness between the, 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 the two phase corrected versions. So here in, 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 in this example, we lost on both ways. We lost definition and we <laughs> lost peak level, which is a bit silly. All right, so here I loaded something else. I have a new track in which I zoomed in the waveform in the sonora setting to display better the low end. By the way, I can show you if you want to see that one. These are more or less, uh, these are settings to display properly low end. Now let's listen to all pass filter on. The feel is tightening up. If I go the other way, this. This is making the low end even more boomy. Original. 
Ten Titan. What if I would render this setting? We are now at minus 1.09. Let's, let's render that and let's look at the waveform. Look, before, after. But at that frequency, things change quite a lot. But I have much higher peaks. That's the counterpart. So I gained consistency in the low end, but this process did add a lot of peak. This is uh, an example of where it can solve a problem, but it can bring another one. Never use something as a always. This is the, the really the take of this video. Use your ears, pay attention and do things with intention. Because whatever you do, when you shift the phase, when you work with phase, you affect the relationship of the frequency. And even if the tonal balance remains the same, because every frequency is still there, there our interrelationship is changing and the perception of the sound is changing. The, the, the perception of on the transients, the perception on the clarity and the cohesiveness of the sound is changing. Now we understand how filtering is changing the peak relationships. And once you get this, then you understand why I talked about this in my video on clippers that you can find here below, why you should never clip before any heavy EQing on your master chain, because you are inducing new peaks. So it's always best if you want to use a clipper, to use this after any processor that is inducing shifts in your phase.